Hello, all of my little baby bunnies. Today we're playing fucking uh, Dream Daddy. R yay. Okay, hi, Potato. Yay, we can finally do the thing. I'm gonna take a big drink of this water. Hey, Vice, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Mm. Dad tip number 18 always carry a pocket knife. <laughs> This is great. I just had an account called Divorced Gaming retweet my tweet about this stream. <laughs> Who is that? Hang on. Who's Divorced Gaming? <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Ugh. Okay. Let's fucking do it. Let's keep playing. So I'm a. Oh, that's right. I just walked Mary home. A bird in the hand is better than a bird in the eye. Dad tip number 52. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, okay, so I just walked Mary home, who is Joseph's wife, one of the dads I've gone on a few dates with, um, and I'm now going home. So let's fucking do it. Oh man, I'm gonna have to remember all the voices I do. This is gonna be difficult. Okay. Oh, you you did the follow. That's great. Thank you, Vice. You're a star. You're a great big tasty star. Okay, um, it's a beautiful night and the air smells so fresh, so I decided to take the long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with a low crime rate and wide walkable sidewalks at night. No, uh, okay, so I haven't gone on a date with, um, they haven't been dates with Joseph per se, but there's clearly something going on with Joseph because he doesn't seem happy, and Mary, his wife, seems really unhappy because she's constantly drinking, um, at the bar. So I've, I've, like, hung out with him a few times, um, and, like, we've just been really friendly with each other. I've gone over and helped make brownies and do a bake sale with his kids for his church because he's a youth minister. And then I also helped him facilitate, uh, like, a, a church dance for his, for his youth group. Um, so there's nothing been, like, overly sexy. I think we might have almost kissed in the last one, but we didn't. Um, so yay. Uh, I don't really know what's going on with Joseph. His story is actually really interesting to me, but I gotta, I gotta say, Matt's my favorite dad. I'm, I'm gonna go with Matt for this playthrough that I'm doing on stream. Um, but let's move on. As I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head, and now it's lots of drops of water. It's pouring rain. Maybe I should wait this out inside. I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. The bar is unusually crowded, and the feeling of camaraderie over a shared love for the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. Um, I'm not sure... I feel like I just played this part. Did it not save properly? Oh no. I don't think it saved properly. Hmm. I thought I saved it before this. Okay. We'll, we'll do this part again anyways, just to give you guys some context, because you haven't been around for this. I look over into the corner and spot none other than Mary, sitting alone and in the corner nursing a cocktail. Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off, you know what, let me bring the mic a little bit closer. Because I just realized it was really far away. Here we go. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy, she looks so sad. A pang of guilt shoots through me. Does she know? Is this because of me? Am I a homewrecker? Oh, Vice, you called it. Um, I'll go say hi. I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. The seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyways, and she finally notices me. You. Okay, this was maybe not the best idea. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we tried to make him look like Tom Hardy with a beard, but turns out he just looks kind of like a douchebag. Um, the Viking and I are not super happy about that. We, we really wanted him to look like Tom Hardy. We called him Thomas uh, Hardish. <laughs> but he doesn't look like Tom Hardy at all. It's a shame, really. Anyways, having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's a great... I'm so glad. I'm happy for you two. Mary, I'm not 
I'd never accuse you of anything uncouth, Thomas. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. I feel like this happened differently. Did I play this part? I'm really confused because this didn't happen. You're a good friend, aren't you? Um, yeah, I'm really unsure of how to respond to this. Uh, I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, I didn't mean to be that rude. Shit. I'm there for him when he needs me, unlike some other people in his life. Holy shit. So you're an expert on my marriage now? Um, I'll say I'm sorry. I can tell that you're having a rough time, and I just want you to know that it doesn't have to be like this. I don't want any hard feelings between us, Mary. Mary pauses. It's all messed up. Tell her I pork his pudding pops? That's fucking weird as shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah. I'm sorry for us both. Mary pays her tab and strides right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. Yeah, that didn't happen. Maybe this is a different night? You've got dads. Because I helped walk her home one night when she was like really drunk. I guess it just happened again. That's really strange. Okay. Um, so I have, I've taken Matt on two dates. I've taken Robert on two quote unquote dates. And Joseph on two dates. Um, uh, Robert is a weird one. I think I made a mistake with Robert because I don't think you're supposed to sleep with him that first night. And I did. And now every time I've tried to hang out with him, it's like I'm just a booty call. He kicks me out. We sleep together and he immediately kicks me out afterwards. So I think I made a mistake with with him in particular. And I feel kind of like an asshole idiot for it. Next time I play through, I'm going to do his route differently because that I don't think I did that right um so I'm not super interested in Craig I do like Brian but I am interested in Damien um I don't want to take Matt or Joseph on like final dates quite yet so let's take at least Damien on a date um and then we're gonna take Matt on the last on the third date and see if that finishes up the game um, cause I know you can play separate routes with each dad with many different outcomes. So let's take Damien. Okay. Uh, Damien Bloodmarch. <laughs> How do you do? I have finally decided, decided to join this information super highway. Oh wait, I need to do it the way his voice is. Um, uh, let me read it the way I do Damien's voice. How do you do? I finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. Well, it is slightly voice acted. You have like little like grunts and ah and ooh, like whenever they say stuff. Um, but it's not fully voice acted. On a Friday night, you're most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest specimens. Okay, so this is based off of Susie, clearly. <laughs> this is so Susie. If you had one thing, um, if you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? A coffin. What are your turn ons? Pronouncing bosom correctly. <laughs> What do you want to be when you grew up? When you grew up, uh, a bat. <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? For an art house horror. What's your ideal date? It's night. We are at an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. The music drums to the beat of our hearts. What do you never uh, leave home without? An upside down cross. Wow. Okay. I spend a lot of time thinking about mortality salience. <laughs> All right. Let's send him a message. Anyone who tells you that a drink isn't manly has never known heartache. Dad tip number 74. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get him to get bad, bad, bad words to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. Oh no, he's gonna send me like a paragraph. 
and typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and the computer finally dings. Thomas, I must- oh, wow. I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter, for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I do not believe our first meeting- or excuse me, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Yeah, what are you talking about, potato? Damien's daddy AF. I agree with you, Vice. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you, till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Bloodmarch. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Hey, Amanda! Can you help me with something? Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. Ew! <laughs> no, no, can you interpret this for me? Um, so Damien is, from what I've gathered so far, Damien is the only trans character. Uh, he is, uh, and so, but he, he has, like, a teenage son, and he's, like, the only goth dad. Um, he's, like, he's literally described as goth dad. Uh, I turn the computer to a man, and she squints at Damien's message. I just... Don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying lol and LMAO or whatever and decided that what they needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? What? Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Um, yeah, he should be... I, he should be female to male, since he presents as male. Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Or our dowry. <laughs> I love her. Amanda's great. Or, so you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like, the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards, Thomas. Amanda hits send and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. I make the sh- Oh my god, look at his house! I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor, a state. The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and a hollow sound echoes through, um... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh shit, sorry, Vice. What did you try to type? Um... Uh, and a hollow sound echoes through the house as I struck it against the door. I, I only allow, um, all caps, uh, for, like, mods. Sorry. <laughs> I think I only let mods do that. Apologies. Um, also, hi, hi Sporkson. Hi, hi Josh. How's it going? Um, today I am uh, taking Damien on a date, and then I'm going to try to take Matt on the last date. Um, I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. Oh my gosh, he's a fucking vampire. I love it. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil po portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Ugh. He has a big knocker on his door. Ah, oh, Vice, you're a star. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Wow, that is a terrifying looking dog. Uh, uh, hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers bleh, flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Thomas, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry. That w there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? I accidentally left the door unlocked. Um. Oh yeah? 
Oh, that's right. You just started a new job. It sounds like you've been, uh, it sounds like your first day went well, maybe, perhaps, maybe, baby. Hmm. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. Right? Please, let me show you around. Aw, look at his cute little smile. Aw, he's sweet. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcase showcasing his parlor. So I just got um, cavities filled the other day, and like they, they nicked my tongue with the drill. So like I'm having trouble talking. That's why I keep on like stumbling over my words is my, my tongue is like a little swollen over here and it's like fucking getting in the way of my teeth. Yeah, for real, who doesn't like oil paintings? Oil paintings are beautiful and delicious and beautiful. There's something, there's something so nice about oil paintings, like the effort that goes into them because like Acrylics are easy to paint with. Watercolor is not necessarily easy. It takes a lot of practice, but like, it's it's very like it's relatively logical once you get the hang of it. But oil paintings, like that, takes skill, and and it's like, it's like long, tedious work. So you have to be really good at it, and like you have to wait for everything to dry. Ugh, I love oil paintings. They're great. Anyways. Uh, showcasing his parlor sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. <laughs> this is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Through extensive renovations, I've been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. You know what, now that I think about it, um, I want to show you guys this uh, painting that it's the Viking's favorite painting. And he, he asked me a while ago, he was like, do you want to get it replicated like in a large print and hang it over the bed once we have a house? Because he doesn't like putting up things on the walls in apartments, so we have like nothing on the walls. But once we have a house, he'll have no qualms about it. So let me show you guys this fucking painting. It's a, it's a very famous one. Um, I think it's called Nightmare. Yep, it's called The Nightmare. Okay. Gosh, what a cool painting. It's so cool. It's bizarre and creepy. Ugh. He adores this painting. He just absolutely loves it. And it is pretty cool. Okay. Um, we walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, <laughs> caution tape, and a black parade poster. A black parade poster? <laughs> uh, my husband is a special human. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right, potato. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. We reach a door at the end of the hall and Damien opens with a flourish. And this is the library. Ooh, beautiful. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Um. Ooh, butterfly. Yeah, this is so Susie. This is just Susie in dad form. Fucking taxidermied butterflies and a giant library. Oh my gosh. I walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Oh. I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. Oh my gosh, he is cute as a button. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Ah, oh, the pin is gambit. Is that a thing? No. <laughs> you know, Thomas, in the Victorian era, there was some contr co controversy. I love the way, um, like, vaguely uh, British-ish accents, some of them say controversy. The Viking actually says it that way. Like, he still hasn't, even though his accent's really Americanized, he still says controversy instead of 
Hey, Charlie is now following. Hi, Charlie. I don't even know how to say hello to you because <laughs> it says hey in your name. Uh, thanks for following. That's great. You're a star. Um, uh, fucking... Anyways. Yeah, controversy. That's... The first time I heard it, I was like, people actually say it that way? Controversy. You say controversy. <laughs> I've ne I had never heard anybody say controversy until, um, until like, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And I was like, that's bizarre. No, you say it controversy. Yes, potato. That is how you say it. Hi, Somni. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for the host, by the way. Oh shit, Vice has got you in a bind. Okay, you know, Thomas, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. <laughs> Naruto struggled against this chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Suki smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking incredible. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, Samini, I'm doing I'm doing quite well. Um, I took the day off. I oh gosh, I've been doing like I've never watched Naruto, so I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, I took the day off because I've had a bunch of medical stuff and like work is just killing me. I've been so stressed, so I was like, fuck everything. I want a three day weekend, so. Uh, I took today off, so I'm gonna have today all to myself, and tomorrow all to myself, and Sunday all to myself. It's gonna be great. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back into the shelf. <laughs> Potato, you are the weebiest fucker in this room right now. <laughs> Don't you even talk. <laughs> That's a rare book from my private collection. You don't know what it is. Adorable. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. <laughs> Damn, he sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. Did you know that Victorian spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Oh my gosh, Damien. <laughs> Wait, really? Oh. No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Oh. Please, will you join me for tea? I follow Damien to a sitting room where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take seat on one of the high-backed chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. Oh my god, I want to hang out with this dude. I want to hang the fuck out with him. I want to be served finger foods. I want to go into a giant library that's got giant windows. I want to be served tea. This is great. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Damien smiles to himself. What? It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to the later time of day that a working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they're served. I, we do have a tea house nearby, I've just never been there. I, I, I don't know how to, like, go out into the world and do things. I'd much rather just sit here in my home and be, and be a nobody. <laughs> no, we do too. We've got, we've got quite a few nearby, uh, actually. I just, I can think of at least two off the top of my head. I've just never been to them. Uh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Um, it's- oh, he's sexually attracted to me now. Yes! It seems like you've really put a lot of work into this place. Um, a tea house- okay, so potato, we- I know, right? A, uh, a tea house- uh, we don't really, like, do tea. 
as like a common thing here. It's it's not like there's no big hullabaloo that goes with tea. Uh, like the best comparison that I have is when I went to Norway, coffee was the thing to serve everyone. Um, like if anybody came over to spend time with you, you drank coffee. You get up in the morning, you drink a cup of coffee. Someone comes over, you offer them coffee and you serve coffee with, with some snacks. Uh, it's dinner time. You have some coffee afterwards with dessert. Like you drink coffee constantly. It's just like a thing that you do. Um, so, and then like you actually go out to coffee houses and like coffee has this culture surrounding it in Norway that's like, it's just a thing that you do and there's a lot of hullabaloo about it. So a, a tea house here basically just does that in its own setting. You get to go there, you have a snack, exactly what Sporksan just said. You get tea in fancy cups, it gets served to you. Like, it's just a nice different thing for us to experience because it's not super common. I do have a kettle. We got an electric kettle like a year ago. Most Americans don't have electric kettles, by the way. Most Americans don't even have kettles. They will heat their water in the microwave. <laughs> Thank you. No one's ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place and look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Yes, I know. British people always get so mad when I when any American says that. But yes, we often we often put a cup of water in the microwave and then put a tea bag in it. <laughs> you always get so mad. If I do want to do proper tea, I will use the electric kettle. But if I'm exhausted and I just want a nightcap tea, uh, then I will just put it in the microwave. Yes. It's very common and normal. Who is calling me? I don't know who this person is. You are going to be a rejected call. Uh, pretty much everything. <laughs> we have, um, we have a really nice coffee maker. It was probably like $300 when we bought it. Um, and it's still, it's still going strong. It's a, uh, oh, who makes it? Is it Danish? I don't remember if it's Danish or... It's a Mocha Master. Who does Mocha Master? I've totally forgotten. But we have a really nice coffee maker. I love that thing. But we bought a, a Bonavita electric kettle, which has like the long spout so you can control the pour really well. Which is good if you want to make like a pour over coffee too. Um... And that thing was probably like a hundred bucks. Okay. Huh. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Okay, good luck with your refresh, Somni. Uh, well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the worst joke I've ever heard in my life. Um, let me grab a snack real quick. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm super hungry. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so the Viking uh, is an excellent baker, and the other day he not only made bread, but he made from scratch cinnamon rolls, and they are delicious. They are so very tasty and good, and this is the last one. He, um, I don't think we had any milk, so he just like tried 
but we had some almond milk for that I used for making smoothies. So he was just like, I'm going to try to use almond milk and see what happens. It actually turned out really good. Oh. Mm. Ah! Oh no, the bottom of this cinnamon roll is sticky as shit. I may have just flung pieces of it onto the keyboard though. Mm. I remember the first time I ever used an electric kettle was when I went to Norway for the first time. When I was like... 21. <laughs> Are we being mean to you? I'm just eating a cinnamon roll. <laughs> I have never heard anybody call potato a little boy before. <laughs> What were you expecting to show up, Potato? Mmm. That was exactly what I needed. Okay. Huh. Sorry. <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> when I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. Okay. Of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? I'd love to see a marching band. Oh. Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art history and fashion, which started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals, grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege- <coughs> Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, hi Dalton, 20-bit, Mr. 20-bit, Mr. Dalton, Sir 20-bit Dalton. How are you doing? And thank you for the host. I appreciate it. Um, it's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Uh, I'm sorry, did you just come in and- did you just come in to dab? And then- and, like, that's it? <laughs> Why not go all the way? I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. I can acknowledge that there are many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Oh my god, that's beautiful! That's totally- okay. There's a book, it's one of my favorite books, um, by Patrick Rothfuss. It's, well, there's three books within the world of the Kingkiller Chronicles, but in the second book, The Wise Man's Fear, the main character says something, um, says something like kind of like this, but not really, because he's talking about society and like a time period or whatever. But uh, he's uh, the main character in the book is a musician, and uh, he he bought this lute that was like not the most beautiful thing in the world it was like it like had a crooked neck and it was prone to going out of tune um but to him it was the most beautiful thing in the world because it was his and uh and to describe his like emotional attachment to it 
He says something like, um, It's the easiest thing in the world to love a thing because, but to love a thing despite, to see its flaws and love those too. That is pure and beautiful and perfect. And it's just memeing, it's what you do. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Dalton. I really appreciate that. Um, and of course I'm paraphrasing, so it's not nearly as poetic and beautiful um, as, the way it's, as the way it's said in the book, but it's such a gorgeous saying, like statement. It's such a beautiful thing to say um, because I think it's, I think there's a lot of accuracy to the statement. Um, because it is easy to love something because it's wonderful or because it's perfect. Um, but, but real, but real love, um, and it's not to say that it's like healthy or anything, but like real true love is when you can recognize that there are flaws, but you still appreciate them for being there any, like regardless. I think that's really cool. Anyways, I'm talking too much. Tell me, Thomas, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing and quite- <clears throat> Excuse me, God damn it! I just ate half of a cinnamon roll and now I'm Burp City. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing and quite honestly, rather attractive. Your love for Ben and Jerry's fish food is untrue because you find no flaws in it. No, it's more, it's more just that it's easy to love something because it's perfect. It's, it's the, I think re realistically the thing he was saying, and I know you're just fucking with me and being a jerk, whatever. <laughs> Realistically, I think I think more what he's saying and he was talking in the book like on its face He was talking about this this instrument that he loved to have and he loved to play But he was actually talking about the girl he loved in the book um, Because she had a lot of flaws, but But that didn't mean that he didn't love her. He recognized her flaws. He accepted them and he loved her almost almost because of them, because a perfect thing has no, often has no complexity to it. Um, tends to be boring. Um, at least in my opinion. Anyways, day man. <laughs> that guy we're taking on a date. <laughs> oh my gosh, Vice, you are, whew, you are harsh. You are harshing up the mellow in this place. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. You know what? Let me be, f I'll be honest, because I, I know my character likes word jumbles. The, uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know? And, uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. It's poetic, really. Oh, so you're a writer? In a sense. We finished our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. <laughs> Damien ta- oh, that's beautiful. Damien takes me around the back of his home where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it and butterflies flit lazily through the air. My garden. It's beautiful. Thank you. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off the vine. Lilium bulbiferum, sure. The orange lily, what do you think this one means? 
Thou art the tightest. Three cheers for sweet revenge. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is so funny. Um. Oh, he loved that. Yay. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Well, and that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What is your favorite type of flower? Yes, I know, my loins. Um, I actually love sunflowers. Honeysuckle's nice because you can eat them. Well, eat the honey part. Uh, snapdragons are cool, but I love sunflowers. They're just so simple. They remind me of sunshine, and then you can eat the seeds as a delicious snack. What a practical choice. My stomach grumbles. Ah oh, man, now I want sunflower seeds. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. Aww! He... You would put together a bouquet for me? Everyone... No one's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Thomas, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had a little, put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Uh, our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and immediately died. How on earth is that possible? Watermelons, like you drop a seed accidentally and then they just start to grow. Maybe I'm thinking of pumpkins. Was it pumpkins or watermelons that happened in our backyard? We like accidentally put some seeds of some type of melon. Uh, like they just fell into where there was dirt. And then we had a giant plant the next year that was trying to get into the pool. <laughs> oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Oh shit, you can save a book. Oh god. Oh no, oh no. Oh god, okay. Uh. Oh god. Oh, that's the head. Okay, um. Nope. That's the legs. Like that. No? Shit. Oh no, these are the legs. Okay, there we go. No? Shit. Oh god! Uh... Oh, it's upside down. No! Shit. There we go. There we go! Yeah, I did it! Okay. Whew! First is the worst, second is the best, third is the one with the hairy chest! Whew, that was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. <sighs> Thomas, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to. So I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post haste. Do you need help? Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. Oh. Hey, Hugo. Oh, Hugo. I've forgotten Hugo's voice. This is going to be challenging. Hugo, I think, was made to sound like a fa 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 fa. Damn it. Okay, so Damien is. Hello, how are you? And then Hugo is. <sighs> Shit. Fa, 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 fa. Hey, Damien, you're here in record time. I think that's right. I wouldn't miss it. Sorry, some I, I just heard something move outside, I think. And it confused me. Okay. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear, fr dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, doesn't seem like this is Hugh Hugo and Damien's first time to the Kids My Are in Trouble rodeo. What is it this time? Oh. This, Damien, you- Oh, damn it, no, this is- ah, fuck. 
You have to see to believe. Yes, that's right. I need a deeper, a deeper voice for that. Okay. Damon and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us uh, into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step! I can hear faint, bleh, <laughs> faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and I see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me! Lucian tried to kill me! I. The room falls silent. I was not trying- uh, oh. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you to see what would happen. You promised me there was wine to- Oh my gosh, it's the cake. It's the cask of Amontillado. <laughs> oh, literary references. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I can't believe they just- I can't believe they just reenacted an Edgar Allan Poe short, short story. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait a second. Lucian, did you try to cask a mantel of Montelado, Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damon and whisper to him. What's, uh, what's cask of Montelado? Oh no, you fool. You fool! It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down into the cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, and then buries him alive behind a brick wall. It's a lovely story. I actually like that story a lot. <laughs> okay, so Damien might be one of my favorite dads now. Now that I've like interacted with him, he's great. <laughs> so wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. <laughs> what was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. It sort of tipped me off. <laughs> Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad? Whoa. It took you 20 minutes, son. We did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse. Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. Oh. It's only five pages long, and there is isn't. Yeah, it's a really short story. <laughs> and there is no movie. I love how Hugo's like... I have all these people being like slightly British, but their kids are like totally American. <laughs> oh, hey, Courier Luke. How's it going? Oh, dude. Oh, wine. I love wine. Wine's the best. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucien to read it for me. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not even a dungeon. It's a it's just a wine cellar. Um in the story. All he's doing is just taking him down to a like a like a reclusive part of the wine cellar and then he bricks him up. It's great. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature and I did. I don't see a problem here. All right, I'm filing this under the what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucy and high five. The teacher starts to stop up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmarsh, you too. Oh, your story is different. Yours requires a dungeon. <laughs> Thank you for the mediation. We all head up the stairs and out the school in tense silence. Lucy and Damon and I all pile into my car and begin to drive home. Lucy immediately puts his head up, hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to ther- oh no, sorry, that was Lucian, not Damien. I'm not going to therapy again. 
I know, son, it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I do care about you, and I see that you're struggling, so if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. I love you, son. Lucien continues staring out the window. Love you too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucien hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright. All things considered, Lucien's bricklaying was pretty good. So there's your silver lining. There is that, yes. You'd <laughs> flip your shit on your kid. I... Here's my deal. Um... <laughs> wow. Your kids will be winners? Oh, God! Ugh. Oh. Um... I'm not... I'm not a fan of... I'm not a fan of parents displaying, like, a lot of anger in front of their kids. Um, that's probably, like, a, an issue with me. I, I had to deal with some emotional abuse as a kid, so, like, angry people freak me out. Um, like, I'm almost 30, and I still get scared of angry people. Like, it's not healthy. So I... If I were to have kids, I would make a really significant effort to not, like, r like get really angry at them. Because it's not... It affected me very poorly. So I just don't think I would do that. I, so I'm going to say that I really like how he, handled, how he handled that. He stayed calm. Um, and he actually talked to his kid like... Like a, like a human being. Which is, I think, how you should handle stuff like that. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. See you around soon? It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Oh. I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket wearing a t- uh, blanket watching TV. She's not wearing the TV. I plop down next to her. Yo! What you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. That sounds amazing. I want to watch that. Ugh, oh, I hate this show. Uh-uh, that sounds like the best show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. <laughs> oh my god. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two-bed, two-bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. It's a show that my husband and I would watch. It is a show we would love to watch. <laughs> We're like, we know it's awful, but it's we love watching that shit together. <laughs> I am not pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular sized house? I don't know. How'd afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... He lured Ernest down into the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How'd you know that? Has everyone read the story except for me? Apparently. It's a classic story. <laughs> <laughs> Lucian live-streamed the entire thing. <laughs> This entire day is beyond me, but otherwise it's been a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but he's really good company, and a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. I love that. Oh fuck, I forgot to take my meds this morning. Hang on a fucking second, you guys. <gasps> what kind of grade did I get? S? S is good! Oh no! 
that's a band. I wonder if the S stands for sexy. That's the first one I've gotten. That sounds great. Hang on a second, I forgot to take my pens. To see a marching band. He is a very good dad. I actually like him a lot, but Matt's my favorite, by far. Okay. I, I can't say no to Coffee Dad. That's the thing, is Coffee Dad is like hot and awkward and he's got a, and he's a Coffee Dad. He likes, he likes like coffee puns and he's got dreadlocks and he likes music. Like what's not to like about that? Man, I did really good on this date. This is great. Okay, yes, but, but Coffee Dad. Maybe you'll understand once I take Matt on a date. Okay, achievement progress, interview with the vampire. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna try and, um... Okay, yeah, but Matt has like an ultra modern house and... And he went to... And we went to a, a concert together and then we went to a, a vinyl store and bought some... And bought some records together. And he, Oh god, I love him, he's beautiful. And his daughter made him a flower crown and he wore it at a, at a barbecue. He's... He's the oh I love you Matt you're so beautiful okay let's let's hang out with him okay you know what they say about third dates they get pretty serious are you sure this is your dream daddy I'm fucking sure I'm so fucking sure oh my god dad tip number 90 always try to make others around you happy man I'm trying Matt and I have spent a lot of time together lately. After we went to record shopping the first time, it sort of became a weekly tradition for us to scope out Vinyl Fantasy 7. <laughs> Vinyl Fantasy 7? Oh my god. I'm so happy. Oh god. Uh, for new releases, on quieter days, I'll go to the coffee spoon just to hang out with him. He's been trying to get me to branch out from my usual black coffee to try new drinks, and they're always delicious. Since I've been spending so much time with Matt, Carmen Sita and Amanda have become really close friends. Amanda's taking Carmen Sita under her wing, teaching her about photography, helping her with homework, and introducing her to music that's not just boy bands. Well, she did end up taking to her to one of those Scream Cry Dance Boy concerts so Matt wouldn't have to go. A truly heroic move. I can tell that Carmen Sita really looks up to her a lot, so it's great that Amanda's trying to be a good mentor. I have, I've literally only ever sat down to play the first one on the NES. I've never played any others. I watched my brother play Final Fantasy Tactics, I think. I don't know, maybe three. Anyways, the open mic night is tonight. Amanda and I busy ourselves getting ready. I try to pick out a nicer outfit than usual and pace around the room. A bunch of really cool bands are going to be playing, and I'm excited to see them. I haven't been to a show since the first time Matt and I hung out. It's weird. Ever since Matt played piano for me that one time, I've never been able to convince him to do it again. He told me that he also plays guitar, drums, and even the trumpet. He still won't play any of them. For someone so passionate about music, it's strange that he doesn't want to actually play it. Dude, he messes his wife. It's understandable. Oh yeah, that's, um, Matt's backstory, by the way. His wife, uh, I think his wife died from cancer, and they were in a band together, um, and so, like, I think a lot of his musical association, like, playing music is, uh, just reminds him of his dead wife, which is sad. Okay. You ready to go, Pops? I can hear Amanda in the hallway as she approaches my room. Yep. Amanda pops her head in and looks me over. She pinches the bridge of her nose. Dad, we talked about this. What? 
The sandals, they're older than I am. Vintage, some would argue. Oh no. I thought you threw them out. Amanda, since when did you enroll in the Fashion Police Academy? Oh, I just watched Police Academy for the first time ever the other night. Uh, I'm so sad I never saw it before. It was really funny. <laughs> um, because our HBO has been down for a couple days, so we haven't been able to catch up on any HBO shows. So we had to watch stuff on Netflix like normal people. <laughs> so we watched Police Academy. It was really funny. The Viking said that it was his very first exposure to movie boobs. And he was like, it was like, it was like a revelation. <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to watch that kind of stuff growing up. So of course I didn't see it until now. Mm. Okay, uh, Josh, you missed um, the majority of our first date with Damien, who's actually a really cool dad and I like him a lot, um, but uh, he's not going to be my dream daddy. My dream daddy is Matt, which is coffee dad, and we're getting ready for uh, a get-together at the, at the coffee shop he owns right now, so. I got kicked out because I was a loose cannon who didn't play by the rules. For example, you're not allowed to mix florals, but you totally can if you have a good eye for color. You're out of your jurisdiction, rookie. Amanda guards the door until I pick out a different outfit. Or a better outfit, excuse me. Will- will it? <laughs> um, stop. Those sandals are going directly into the evidence locker. What's the... It's the trash. <laughs> okay. Um, I keep the sandals, but I won't wear them tonight. Then we have this exact same argument the next time I try to pull them out. <sighs> I guess. Come on, Dad. We gotta go. Oh. I've never seen the coffee spoon so packed. I spot familiar faces from the pup concert, all sipping on their uh, caffeinated beverages of choice. A couple of people... Bleh people are setting up on stage. You know, a couple of people. I don't see Matt, but I'm sure he's busy in the back. Amanda and Carmen Cita find each other immediately and do their secret handshake. Some complicated clapping with their hands and then a big hug. Thomas! Oh god, I've been listening to Hamilton too much. I just said Thomas like that and I was like, and I wanted to start singing, uh, what did I miss? <laughs> You simply must meet Thomas, Thomas! Okay, I turn to see Hugo sitting at a table with none other than Tamian. Fancy you two, uh, seeing you two here is what I meant to say, Jesus. Ah. I am, as you know, a, dedica a dedicated patron of the arts. Oh. It's a bit of a tradition between Damien and I now. Matt's open mic nights always seem to bring out the best talent in town. Sometimes, sometimes it gets a bit odd, even for my admittedly eclectic tastes. You guys seen Matt around? Mm. Yeah, he was just helping that Pablo kid get some equipment out of his van. Mm. Whoa, Vacant Vale is playing a set? Um. What? It's, a uh, witch house. Mm. Damien's ears perk. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> well, it sounds delightful. <laughs> Amanda says it isn't. Shame. All right, I'm gonna go find Matt and see if he needs any help. Oh, I love you. Hello, Matt. I head to the back room of the coffee spoon where I find Matt going over some last minute show details with Bob. Bad Pablo. My dude. Pablo and I share a full on sincere bro hug. Glad you could make it, Thomas. By the way, this is Tom. This is Matt's voice. <laughs> I don't know why I decided. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to give him like a 30s radio announcer voice, <laughs> but it's been really fun. Okay, wouldn't miss it for the world, man. You guys need any help? Ah, I think we're all set, actually. Pablo, can you remind me what order people are going up in? Well, you got the handsome and unforgettable vacant fail opening up the set with selections from his new album, Witch Diaries, and then the third waves who are all extremely attractive and could beat me up, and I'd still be into it, it's, and are playing a three-person acoustic set. He does have, like, a jaunty hip, doesn't he? I can't... Like, it's supposed to be a dude. He got a hairy chest and a hairy belly. 
We got a bit of spoken word in there, a magic act, and then it looks like we're closing with... Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. No, absolutely not! I remember the ridiculous set that this band put on when they opened up for Pup. Sometimes when it's quiet, I can still hear the sound of an accordion being violently thrown against the wall over and over. Oh, I'm gonna sit like this. Oh, that feels nice. They weren't that bad. No, you don't understand. The last time they played open mic night, they lit their bassist on fire and the fire marshal had to set us down. Shut, shut us down, words. <laughs> they also refused to pay for their drinks. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> they are not playing tonight. Well, they're outside, all 17 of them. Tell them we're full. Then who's filling their spot? Ah! Uh, oh god. Should I tell Matt to play? I think I should tell Matt to play. I don't know, he refuses to play in front of me. Like... I mean, I don't know how to pl I don't think my guy knows any music. What? Come on, Matt, you should play! Oh no, no, that was the wrong- oh. No, I can't, I- I really can't. I'll play! What are you doing? What? What would you even do? Stop talking, close your mouth. The Scumminess- oh, that's right, I was in a ska band! The Scumminess Manifesto is making a comeback solo show! Oh, I forgot I was in a ska band! That's the choice I should have made, I'm so stupid. I thought you didn't know how to play anymore! You don't know how to play anything anymore. Ska comes- y Ska comes to you in the hour when you need it most, without fail! Stop being so desperate to please your hot friend, Thomas! Is there a keyboard around? Your undying thirst will be your ultimate downfall. Gosh, I I am thirsty. <laughs> yeah, I have one right here. Then it's settled. Dude, are you sure? No, I'm not. As sure as ska is generally played with staccato notes on the upbeat. Well, as long as nothing gets set on fire, it can't possibly be worse than Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. Matt grabs me by the shoulder ooh, and stares into my eyes. Thank you, Thomas. I owe you big time. Oh, that was sexy. I settle back in my seat with Amanda and watch the show start. The house is packed now, with a few people have been standing outside to watch. What have I gotten myself into? Amanda, I may have made a mistake. Dad, if you bought a brand new pair of those sandals in hopes that I would be okay with you wearing them, I swear to- I agreed to pull out my ska. <gasps> no. Absolutely not. I had to, to help Matt. Dad, I love you and I support you, but we left ska behind for a reason. Look, it's either this or we're in the splash zone for a group of 20 musicians all crying at the same time for the sake of art. And I'm not being hyperbolic about the splash zone thing, they literally hand out ponchos. Somehow this is the preferable option. I just have to play the thing. Play what thing? You don't even know how to play any instruments. Just promise me you'll still love me after this. I promise. But I may have to change my last name and hope you'll understand. Of course. My new last name is gonna be Fireblast. <laughs> oh god, I love her. Amanda. Or maybe Cold Steel. Matt takes the stage to a roar of applause from the crowd. Oh, he's- oh. God, like, they couldn't have designed a more beautiful man for me. Like, he's perfect. <laughs> to the roar of applause from the crowd, he grabs the mic and addresses us all. Ah, thank you, everyone. Matt's so nervous. And I'm so nervous. I know, isn't she beautiful? I love Amanda. I can't stop staring at his mouth, and that makes me even more nervous, dude. Neither can I. <laughs> Whew. Fuck, I am thirsty as shit. <laughs> we have a jam-packed roster of amazing local talent who you might already know or maybe have seen before, but would like to see again, and I'm rambling now. Sorry. <laughs> I love how awkward he is. He's beautiful. Oh, Matt. So, um, let me just bring on a dear friend of mine who's making his live show debut. Please welcome to the stage. They can fail! The crowd cheers again and Pablo bounds up to the stage beaming. He sits up two laptops and keyboard and launches into a set. His belly, like, shape is very confusing for me. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This one is called Witch House Never Dies and You're Next. Pablo hits the crowd with heavy, inaccessible synth bass, layered under drum samples and clips from science fiction shows played in reverse. 
it's maybe not the right show for this, but everybody seems to be enjoying whatever this is. At the end of the song, Pablo jumps on the mic. Thank you all to the veil wearers who came out tonight. A portion of the crowd cheers. He has a fan base already? He has a name for the fan base? This is his first live show. It's really hard to figure out what's wrong with him. I agree, Vice. Amanda Coldsteel the Hedgehog. Oh my god. <laughs> you can buy t-shirts out of the trunk of my car after the show. Also, I'd like to thank my mom for coming out to watch me play your Marak Ma. Love you, honey. <laughs> Pablo plays a few more songs that are actually super fun to listen to. Wow, definitely did not see that coming, especially after Amanda's strongly worded thoughts about the genre. Oh. Once he's done, he vacates the stage and Matt jumps back up again. Oh. Big round- oh, big round of applause for our very own Pablo, who coincidentally works here. Yay, Pablo! And hey, uh, next up are a group of young ladies who've been tearing up the East Coast with Riot Punk for three tears. Uh, three tears now? Also, Riot Punk? Sweet. Years. I meant years. Three year, uh, years. Sorry, the writing on my hands is smudged because I am sweating. <laughs> I shouldn't have told you all I'm sweating. I'm sorry. Uh, wow, he seems just as visibly nervous as I feel right now. Put your hands together for the third waves. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dalton. Do you have a hedgehog? Good lord, could my eyebrows be more non-existent? So summer is always like that time of year where I spend just enough time outside where my eyebrows get really bleached by the sun and they just disappear. They just slowly disappear on my face. Buzzcut Molly from Vinyl Fantasy 7 takes the stage, followed by two girls with colorful hair and fishnet stockings. Yeah, I know, right? I do. Who would have thunk it? Brr. Um, eyebrows must be an American thing. Yeah, you're totally right. It must be. <coughs> Just like microwaving water for tea. Um, all of them are wearing combat boots and all of them look mad about something. <laughs> Their set is so energetic that it almost seems like the pit is going to open up the coffee shop. Uh, I look over to Amanda, who's clearly enjoying the hell out of anarchic female-fronted punk rock. Dude. Oh, what's that band I really like? The singer of Rancid, his wife, if they're still married. I don't know if they're still married. She's got a really cool band. The Distillers! That's a cool band. That's a cool punk band. Okay. Dad, can I get a lip ring? Sure, if you pay for it yourself. Come on, it's no fun if it's not an act of youthful rebellion. After the third wave to close out their set, a variety of acts play the delight and sometimes horror of the crowd. A magician tries to turn a cup of coffee into a cup of coins, but ends up just spilling hot, hot coffee all of himself and dropping the coins. As each act leaves the stage, I get more and more nervous. There are so many people here. Yeah, also, Potato, you were so insistent that I play this game right now that I didn't have time to draw eyebrows on, which I would normally do. But now this is just what you have to live with. I don't know anything about how to play the piano other than that it has keys and you have to touch the keys to make sounds. Also, I almost spilled the flat white stripes in my hand because it's trembling so much. Flat white stripes. <laughs> Ugh, I hate flat whites. They're gross. Don't drink flat whites, you guys. They're gross. Mm. No joke, Dad. I'm rooting for you. You're gonna knock him dead. Thanks, Manda Panda. An improv comedy group takes the stage. They take suggestions from the crowd and end up doing a scene that was supposed to be about coffee, but instead turns into five minutes of dick jokes. Classic. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't know. You won't be- there's no way for you to tell. The rest of my face is a blank slate. I have a hard time laughing. My stomach is tying itself into knots. Not just regular knots either. Like the kind of knots you get when you throw your phone charger, headphones, and laptop charger into the same bag. Out of nowhere, Matt sits down next to me. Hey, are you- uh, hey, are you doing okay? Oh, that's a great idea, Vice. <gasps> Maybe I should just shave off my eyebrows and draw them on differently every day, depending on how I feel that day. I want to reassure him that I'm okay, but I just can't get the words out. I'm here. Hey. All right, just making sure. I know you're going to do great, Thomas. Matt squeezes my shoulder and jogs back up to the stage. Everybody, we're down to the last act of the night. 
Now this person, who is my friend, is making their return to the stage after a long hiatus. Please welcome, formerly of the Scommunist Manifesto, Thomas Hardish. Everyone cheers as I take the stage. Damien and Hugo are staring at me in shock. Uh, hey everybody, good to be here. Thanks for having me on, great crowd. Um, my name is Thomas. <laughs> Excuse me. But you can call me by my stage name. <laughs> I like Five Iron Freddy. Well, I don't know. My name is actually Thomas. The crowd claps politely. I sit down at the piano. <laughs> That's a lot of keys. That's so many keys. Do pianos usually have this many keys? God, these lights are really bright. Someone coughs. I guess... Uh, I guess that's some good stage banter, and now I have to play a song. The song is called Beam Me Up, Scotty. Deep breath. How hard can it be? Laserdisc is clearly- Oh no! Oh no! Tickle that ivory. Okay. La 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 la. Take it up. <laughs> if you don't skank tonight, <laughs> this is disastrous. I yes. I don't know. Everybody ska? <laughs> it doesn't take it's not telling me what to do. I'm very scared. Beat me up to the ska track enterprise. Like, I've got no clue what's going on. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Always bring a war chest. Dad tip number 30. I look up at the crowd, I see a bunch of people shifting in their seats. Oh no, I'm losing them. Ska really is dead and I killed it. Everybody Ska? Everybody Everybody Ska! <laughs> Like a checkerboard tie-wearing angel descending from two-tone heaven, Matt walks on stage playing the guitar. We lock eyes and he gives me a reassuring smile as effortlessly plays the chords to the song. I look out and see the crowd go wild and Matt's appearance on stage. Everyone's bouncing around now. Yes! It fills me with renewed energy as I, we, jump into the chorus. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up to Scotty to this contract enterprise. <laughs> Matt jumps into an improvised solo that was way better than the one Dr Darren Springstead. Darren Springstead wrote in high school? Oh no. Hey. We make it to the end of the song in one piece and the crowd goes wild. I think it was supposed to be garbage no matter what I did. I'm moist with sweat, head to toe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt Sella! The crowd practically screams. They all start chanting Matt's name. They want to hear you play, man. Matt smiles. I think I'm ready. I excuse myself from the stage and take my seat next to Amanda as Matt cozies up to the microphone. I take back what I said about Ska. That was pretty cool. High five Amanda as we look towards the stage. Hey, hey everybody! More cheers! Hmm. I haven't played in front of people in a long time, but it's cool to be back. Hey. This one goes out to a good friend. Matt locks eyes with me. We both smile. Hey, yeah. Who helped me to be able to do this again. Hey. Thank you! Hey. This is an old one from Stillness the Dancing. The entire crowd excitedly jumps to their feet. Matt closes his eyes and starts playing an upbeat, intricate melody. The crowd sways to the music. Matt looks entirely at peace with a small smile on his face as he sings. After he finishes his song, the crowd insists on an encore. He ends up playing a few more tunes to an adoring audience before thanking everyone for coming out. The moment he steps off stage, uh, he gets mobbed by people. Everyone seems to be amazed that he's playing again. Mm. Damien and Hugo thread their way through the crowd to talk to me. That was a ma- uh, uh, god damn it. That was amazing. Ah. It was certainly a sight. Do they make industrial dark wave ska? I'm not sure if the genre exists, but it's never too late to start a band, apparently. I glance back over at Matt, who's hugging a bunch of people. They really seem excited to see him play. Mm. Well, yeah, he hasn't played since he lost Rosa. What? Mm. I didn't realize. It suddenly all makes sense why Matt was so reluctant to play. 
It must have taken so much for him to jump on stage with me just now. The crowd slowly filters out to the street as the show ends. I decide to stick around a little while longer to see if I can talk to Matt. Hey, I'm talking- uh, I'm taking Carmen Cita to get ice cream. Is it okay if she sleeps over? We're gonna paint our nails and start a punk band. Yeah, go have fun. Just please don't wake up the neighbors with any biting truths about the government or whatever. Don't worry, we'll wake them up figuratively instead. Amanda and Carmen Cita bump fists and head out. I spot Matt finishing up conversations with a couple of stragglers on their way out to the coffee shop. Uh, way out of the coffee shop, rather. Hey, Matt. Oh. Hey, dude. Need help closing up? Hey. I'd love that. Matt and I stack up chairs and sweep the floor in silence. We carry the stage equipment back to Matt's van, where we see Pablo selling merch to a crowd of people out of his trunk. Shirts of the finest quality. Every step of production, from thread to stitch, overseen by yours truly. Graphic designs fit for a king. That kid's gonna go far! We head back into the coffee spoon, and Matt puts the finishing touches on closing. When we're all done, Matt and I lean up against the counter. Thanks for saving me from myself up there. All in all, it ended up being pretty cute. Plus, you protected us from Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. Someone told me they tried to do a street performance down the road, and they all got arrested for trying to form a human pyramid in traffic. Is, is Bablo your favorite dad? <laughs> did it feel good to be on stage again? Yeah, it really did. I, um, I heard that you stopped playing after your wife died. I didn't realize it had been that long. Uh, yeah. Matt looks like he wants to say something, but is having a hard time getting it out. He takes a deep breath. I'm not really a people person. Um, obviously. Crowds make me nervous as all hell, which, uh, is not exactly the best for performing live music. But when I was with Rosa, she lit up the room. I could follow her lead. After she passed, I was lost. Even touching a guitar hurt too much. I tried playing for people over and over, but the music would never come out, so I just gave up. I guess what I'm trying to say is, life wasn't this scary when I had someone in my corner. Someone I felt safe with. Aww. I make him feel safe. I, um... Hadn't felt like that for a long time. Until tonight. What changed? Fucking me? Fucking me? Hey. You! Blood rushes to my face. When I saw you looking so scared on stage, you reminded me of myself. And I don't want anyone else to have to feel that bad. Hey. But when I got up there and started playing for the first time in forever, I felt comfortable. I was having fun. I had spent all this time being so afraid of performing that I forgot how much I loved it. Hey. Your strength gave me strength. Whether you were trying to or not, you got me out of my comfort zone. So, thank you. Hey. Thank you for helping me realize that I can do this. I'm glad I could help. You coming on stage, I didn't think you would stick your neck out like that for me. Especially considering all of this. That really means a lot to me. Well, you mean a lot to me. Ah! Matt and I lock eyes. He leans in ha! He leans in and kisses me, quick and soft. He pulls away and covers his mouth. Oh god, I'm sorry. I, uh, sorry, I can't believe- Oh, he's, he's so cute. I just did that. Neither can I, but I'm glad you did. Our lips touch again. I brush his hair out of the way and rest my hand on the small of his back. Matt pulls me closer. Everything about him is sweet and soft. His lips taste like vanilla and he smells like coffee cake. Oh, that sounds like the best man in the world. I can feel him smile through the kiss, which makes me smile. He laughs into my mouth and I can't help but laugh too, our teeth knocking against each other. Ow! <laughs> the moment I open my eyes, I realize we're still leaning against the espresso machine. Maybe the coffee shop isn't the right place for this. Maybe you're right. Let's go back to my place. Exercise regularly and you'll stay healthy. Dad tip number 26. Yes. Ah, oh, I did terribly. Oh well. At least I got to go back to, to his place. King of Carrot Flowers. Achievement unlocked. Whew. I think I have... I uh, have everything finally set up. There we go. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, Thomas, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Something fishy? Rats. It's the feds. The life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the US government. Ugh. 
Well, if they think they're gonna take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would be my- uh, excuse me. It would be fill my heart with glee. Oh, that's a typo. Okay. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but- Ah, oh, Dad, you- I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers? This is all 19 seasons! And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. Uh -huh. What? <laughs> it's a surprise party! You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Eee! Surprise! Dad, everyone's here! Well, yeah. Everyone wanted to come and support you. Yeah. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Hell yeah, mac and cheese. Thomas, my dude. Pablo, how's the shirt business going? My bud, I got men's shirts, I got women's shirts, I got tank tops in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Each one of them is fine quality, fi a screen printed with the logo and visage of world-renowned witch house outfit vacant veil. Purchasable at most respectable retailers. Hell yeah, dad gangbang. Did I already say that? I don't know if I had said that already, but more specifically, out of the trunk of my car. I'm also selling my mom's world-famous homemade apple butter. Never stop hustling, Pablo. Baby, you got it. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot Brian's voice. It's country. Thomas. Brian, you made it. Ha, huh, I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad? Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Oh, I love her. She's so cute. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to play, pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. <laughs> Brian, I'm excited to play through uh, on my own because the first time I meet him is like a really fun, competitive, like dad off where we are trying to outdo each other's accomplish child's accomplishments. It's great. Hey, bro. Bro, this is a real rager taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be all I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Hey. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces, ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. No one will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. <laughs> Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, yeah? Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. Oh god, Joseph's voice. Looks like you settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We've got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. And I'm sure the kids would love to see your dance moves again. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph. That would be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Hey. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Thomas. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. 
Amanda walks by and pretends not to see you, Hugo. <laughs> that was great. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey. Congratulations on congratu uh, graduating. Excuse me. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Haha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. You're right, go forth. Adult, I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm gonna break anything I want and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. Yes. Well, have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so it'll fit into college just fine. Hey, Robert, glad you could make it. Yep. Robert takes a sip of his drink. Why is he being so cold to me? Everything okay? Sure. Why won't you talk to me? I thought we had something. Come on, Thomas. You know what this was. I, you were an object to me the same way I thought I was an object to you. I figured we were on the same page here. At least from how you were acting. That's right! Damn it! I made a mistake sleeping with him the first night. I shouldn't have done that. If I'd just hung out with him instead, we would have become friends first and then we could have dated. Whew. I made a huge mistake with him. That's why he was ignoring me. But I don't want to be in this if there are feelings involved. I got too much to deal with as it is. I'll catch you around. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. I stare at Lucian. He knows. I know. But I'm a man of my word. The story of his or or oregano betrayal will go unsung. Oh yeah, I tried to buy weed from him, and it was oregano. Thanks for coming by. I spot Amanda and Carmen Cena in a corner of the party. I wonder what they're up to. As I walk up, I can tell that they're already deep in conversation. Listen, it's like prison rules. First day of high school, you gotta establish yourself at the top of the pecking order. Really? Nah, just find a group of people you like and then hang out with them. Be yourself. Don't worry about being cool. You'll find friends. Mm -hmm. And try not to kiss anyone who also has braces. Ah, oh, fair point. You get stuck, kiddo. Hey, guys. Hey, Amanda's dad. Carmen Cita here is getting ready for high school. Got any advice? When you join band, pick the easiest instrument to carry. I'm still walking a little sideways from my sousaphone days. Mm. That's fair. Flute it is. All right, I'll leave you guys to it. Carmen Cita, me and, me and Amanda still on for dinner with you and your pops tomorrow? Yes, we're already planning a carrot cake for you guys. I better keep making rounds. I leave the two to keep conspiring. Oh, that's pretty. Hi. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Matt. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Seems like Amanda really enjoyed this. Thanks for putting together such a nice surprise. Carmen Cita's middle school graduation is coming up in a year or two. I'm sure the right fee, I could put something together. <laughs> Only if I get to DJ. Matt looks down at his hands. He does that whenever he's trying to figure out the right words to say. Oh, he's like me. He's like me in a boy form. I think I had an idea about where this was going, but I, I don't know anymore. I like you a lot, Thomas, but I don't think it's more than just as a friend. Ah, I get that, man. You're cool as hell, and I'm down to keep this as friend. Matt looks up at me. Oh no. Oh no, he only likes me as a friend. Oh. Oh, why you gotta break my heart, Dream Daddy? I appreciate that. I'm still welcome at the coffee spoon? Buddy, you'd be the guest of honor. The last guest, oh no! Oh. I wonder if it's the, oh, it's the date. It's the date grades. I don't think I did a I don't think I did a good enough job on the dates. Hang on. Um I need to look this up. Uh Shit. Um Okay, ranking, rankings, date rankings. What do they mean? Okay. Two 
To woo them, you have to select the right dialogue cues. Um, shit. Oh no, my computer's freezing. Ah. You can receive date rank from S to C. The weighing only ma- This ranking only matters if you're looking to unlock special artwork at the end. Really? So it doesn't actually affect? I don't think it actually affects it. Interesting. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party pops. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's finish this up. Yeah, I don't know. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's, there's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Thomas, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time! Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Hmm. Kind of shocking all our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Always do. Man and I share a hug. This is only beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff. Achievement unlocked, world's best dad. Intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Man and I wave bye to the party goers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah. I know that's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. It's gonna be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story. And I would be nervous about it, but I know that, that you're always gonna be looking out for me the same way I'll always be looking out for you. Jesus Christ words. Yeah. Team Hardish? Team Hardish. Sleep is important. Make sure you're getting enough. The end. Okay. See, now I'm gonna like really look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really look here. Okay. So, you can do all second dates save and then do all third dates before returning to the save if you want to okay you get an s then you did well um so matt hmm yeah this really doesn't like It's such a new game, there's not a lot going on <laughs> online. Like there's not really a, a full walkthrough, like there's a walkthrough, but it's not totally complete. Okay, Matt's ending guide. Let me see if this tells me. Okay, so this tells you what you should do.
but it doesn't say if something is like changes. Interesting. It says if you get perfect dates uh, with the S ranking, you'll unlike you'll unlock special artwork at the end. Hmm. Can't get third date rank S. The piano mini game sucks. <laughs> but still get a good ending. Fuck, there is a different ending. There's totally a different ending. Shit, I did it wrong, y'all. Good ending. Everything else seems to, like, go similarly. Ah. Yeah, there's different dialogue. Boo! I did badly on the dates! I think I got like a B ranking. I think I got like two B rankings. And then I got the C ranking for the last date. So I think it wasn't good enough. Damn. Damn it! Damn! So I have to, ah. All right. Well, fuck it. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> well, shit, it was a lot of fun to play this anyways. Like, I'm totally going to spend way too much time working on this on, on my own time. I'm going to, like, try to perfectly do every... Every dad. Yeah, you finally got to walk, watch it. I'll I'll upload everything onto YouTube later too. Um, yeah, all the all the videos I I think I've started editing them. I just haven't put them up yet. Well, I might have put them up. They're just not released yet. Um, so you'll be able to watch them later, including this one. But yay, I think I'm gonna end it. I'm a little tired. I think I'd like to lay down, maybe take a nap. Naps are good. Naps are real good. But thanks, y'all. And yay, Potato, you finally got to see it on the last one. <laughs> uh. Alright, y'all. Ripstream. Bye. Bye.